Hi there. Uh, we're taking a look at another Graphlex SLR. This time it's the Auto Graphlex Junior uh, in 2x3 size. Uh, I got this camera for one reason. Uh, it has, as far as I know, for a Graphlex SLR, the shortest distance between the film plane and the front of the trapezoid mirror. You know, there's a mirror that comes down 45 degrees, so you get the ground glass up top. I'll we'll just go ahead and open this up for you guys to see. Okay, so there's, you know, you look down. And up the lens, so the lens comes out. Down here works just like all the other SLRs, and then you're really looking through that, you know, parts of my basement, there's a light up there, so. Uh, yeah, so this, this one has around, I measured between the back of that mirror and the film plane around 72 millimeters. Uh, quite a bit shorter than I will bring out my uh, RV uh, Series B. So this is uh, one I reviewed recently. Okay, so if we line them up, you can see uh, quite a bit smaller. And the distance between the front of this mirror, because this is a revolving back, the mirror has to be bigger, so it comes down further. The distance here is like 90, 90 some millimeters, I think, between the film plane and where the front of that mirror swings down. Uh, and you can see if I put them side by side. You know, this one's, this one's a lot shorter. Uh, Height-wise, it's also shorter uh, this way by a bit. Uh, weighs less, uh, and I guess it doesn't have a revolving back would be the drawback. So you're stuck in um, landscape mode, uh, 2x3 or 6x9 centimeters. Uh, this is the film back that came with it. It's an old-style uh, roll film. It takes like a 3-inch, three 3.5-inch three wide or something roll film. I don't remember the format. I can put a note down in the description perhaps, but it just unlocks here. This uh, this roll film back has film inside. I open it up in the change it bag just to see. I have no idea if it's fogged, exposed. It is only wound on one of the rollers. I don't remember which one. I think it's probably been exposed, but maybe never developed. So yeah, we'll, we'll try to develop that and see. What we get, probably nothing. It's probably, you know, people have probably opened this and, and fogged it, but we'll give it a shot. But, you know, you can use other style backs. You could take the, you know, the the, the 6x9 Graflex back I have here would fit right on it, or uh, I have a you know, cut film back mag. The magazine will fit. It will fit on it, not with one hand though. <laughs> I can't put it on with one hand, but it does, it does fit on the back of this camera. I've tried it, so. Uh, the curtain shutter is in pretty bad shape. It's, uh, it's hard to wind. I don't want to wind it too hard. And you can see there's a lot of Horizontal wrinkles going across, those are from being curled up for, I don't know, you know, 20, 50 years. No idea the last time this camera was actually shot. Uh, so the cloth is very dried out. Uh, I'm going to try to restore it, but probably will need to be replaced. That's not a problem. I, I can manage that. Uh, well, you take this apart and you lubricate it, it'll be, it'll be fine. Just repairing that uh, curtain material uh, will be a little difficult, but it's totally possible. So the reason I got this is, as I mentioned, it has a very short distance between uh, the film plane, which is right back here now, and where the 45 degree mirror comes down. Uh, and the reason I got it for that short distance is I have this lens, which is a uh, Eran 27, it's a Russian aerial lens, uh, f2.5, 100 millimeter, and the distance from the rear element, which I've taken off, I'll show that in a second, the distance from the rear element to the film plane when you're focused at infinity is about 72 millimeters. No, about 60, 67, 68 millimeters. I have 72 millimeters from the front of this mirror to the film plane. This lens needs about uh, 68, 67, 68 millimeters. So it won't quite make infinity. It'll probably be close if you stopped it down. It'll be okay, you know, clear in the mirror. But it will focus up close because, you know, focus up close, you extend the bellows out, the lens will be further away. So it'll focus up close. This is a fairly wide angle for medium format, not super wide, but um, yeah, good, a good lens for medium format. And I'll be shooting it handheld up close. I, I, won't, I don't care if it doesn't make infinity. Um, it's totally fine with me. It'll focus, you know, reasonable distances. And it's f2.5, so it's really fast. You can shoot uh, wide open handheld on SLR close street photos or something like that. Of course, everyone's gonna be looking at you because you got a weird 100-year-old camera with a huge Russian lens sticking out the front. Uh, now, the reason I have the rear element off, I was doing some measurements and 
there's the rear element. And you can see if I want to put this on there, it will not fit through the hole in the lens board. So I'm gonna to have to replace the front standard on this and make up a new mount for it, but that's okay. Uh, not a big deal, we could do that. So this, interesting, this lens element is made out of steel. <laughs> and most, you know, most lenses and barrels are aluminum or brass for older ones, but this is, this is steel, it's quite heavy. It's got a lot of glass too, I think it's like a seven element uh, design and it's pretty heavy. So it'd be interesting to see how that handles on the front. The bellows themselves, and I'll, I'll rack this out a little further so we can see the bellows, uh, may not even be wide enough to fit the lens in, right? So they're not, they're not really very much wider than that opening. So I may need to, may need to redo the bellows. I, I've got room on the side. You can see there's, you know, there's plenty of room here to make the bellows a quarter inch wider on either side. I could do like a reverse, you know, reverse taper. They get wider as they come out to fit in there. Uh, so that's that's an easy enough mod. I mean, just they're probably screwed on on the inside or something. I haven't I haven't taken this apart. The screws on the side, front standard, will come off, and you know, screws take the bottom plate off. Screws take the side plate off. All these screws here will open up for the uh, the shutter mechanism. I have had a few of these cameras apart. It's not a big deal. I'll take them apart, and clean, and lubricate everything. Hardest part will be uh, fabricating a new shutter and then. Uh, redoing the front standard but it's not a big deal you know i got i've got cad 3d printer i can do a, a mock-up and then get something machined uh just you know wood and uh, maybe a piece of metal to screw the um the lens into i'd like to make a recessed board this you can see this guy's recessed down quite a bit uh so i can still use this uh, this is a tessar lens bosch and Lohm, zeiss design tessar uh opens up to f4.5 so i mean that's nice this is actually pretty fast a couple stops slower than this guy, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure it takes good pictures. Tessars are great lenses, classic design. So yeah, so I want to take all the leather off. This one is pretty trash. You can see, uh, and it just, you know, yeah, it's just dry rotted and, and, and totally peeling off and nasty. It smells bad too. So we'll take all the leather off, uh, strip it down to the wood that's underneath and see how it looks. If it's, if it's not um, attractive underneath, we can always recover it. It's not a big deal. It's just a box square, right? Uh, now, when you do that, these plates fit on top of the leather. So when you take the leather off, you either need to leave the leather underneath these plates or shim them, you know, to shim this too, because it will not be at this right uh, length. Your, your, your um, shutter will jam, your uh, focusing rack will not work properly, usually because there's you know, tolerances for this leather are built into the construction. So if you do want to peel one of these down to the wood, polish them, there's lots of examples online, looks great. Be sure you shim up or reuse the leather underneath these plates uh, all the way around. Uh, you know, maybe like this guy on the bottom is just a skid plate, probably, I think. You know, maybe you don't have to shim that one, but definitely, uh, definitely everywhere else. There may actually be leather between this uh, uh, side of the focusing uh, rack comes down standard and between here some I don't know on this camera but other cameras I've seen may have leather wrapped around that too so you'll have to make sure that's in place uh, or shim it with something otherwise the you know the rail will be squished in you have some problems and won't fit into the camera properly and won't fit flush so keep that in mind um, you know all these plates will need to be shimmed as well not a big deal you just find something the same thickness glue it on uh, color black so you can't see it the hood itself is in good shape. Um, it's got a few little cracks forming, but I've got some leather treatment we can use to fix that. And there's the uh, lovely nameplate, Autograph Lex Junior, curtain aperture, shutter speeds from 1 tenth to 1 1 thousand. So hopefully after a full you know, restoration, cleave CLA on the shutter, replace the curtain, it'll be working like new. These cameras are, are pretty simple, to be honest. They look a little intimidating on the outside, but once you figure out how they work and how to get them apart, it's not a big deal. So there you go. Uh, this will probably be a project for this fall. I won't get on it right away. I've got a lot of other things in the pipeline, but I will do another video on it when I am finished. Okay. No. And that's that. Thanks for watching.